cataractcoach.com, how to flip up the epinucleus so that you can aspirate it with the FACO probe. So I'm going to show you the case unedited because there are a lot of learning points that are important. If you'd like to just skip ahead to the epinucleus, just go to the 1 minute and 55 second mark. So we're completing our capsular rexus. looks like about a 5 millimeter capsular rexus. This is a fairly routine cataract, moderate amount of nuclear sclerosis. And now we're going to do some hydrodissection. Now, of course, we separate out an, an epinucleus from the endonucleus with hydrodelineation. But it's not my intent here, so we'll do a hydrodissection first. We'll go in various quadrants. And we see that the red reflex became darker, indicating that the fluid waves did go behind there. That looks good. Let's try to rotate it. And it doesn't really rotate, so I'll do another injection. And look in that corner where the tip of the cannula is. You'll see we end up hydrodelineating. And so now, still no rotation. Here's the delineation. Take a look. There. See that separation? So now let's put some more dispersive viscoelastic inside the eye. And we're going to do our FACO. I'm going to use a quick chop technique. So FACO probe going inside the eye. Here comes our chopper. Buzz in with the probe. Chopper goes in. And we split the nucleus. And it's kind of that fibrous thing where it doesn't really fully split. But we're able to bring up part of the endonucleus here. So I'll bring that up out of the capsular bag. And then we'll buzz into the second half of the endonucleus and bring that up. So here we can clearly see that that's the endonucleus and we have an epinuclear shell that's remaining in the capsular bag. You can further subchop these pieces, although this cataract's not so dense, and so we can just aspirate it down with a little bit of FACO ultrasound power. Here's how we take out the epinuclear. Watch carefully. Vacuum only, no FACO power, and we grab it and the chopper helps to flip it up. So two-handed here, vacuum to hold it, watch again, and the chopper helps to push it up, flip it up. Then it comes out of the capsular bag and it's easily aspirated. At this point, you can give a little bit of energy of ultrasound if you'd like to. But remember, when we're grabbing this, it's just with vacuum, no, no extra phaco power. I do not use a separate epinucleus mode most times. So in this case, it was just my regular standard FACO settings for CHOP, which is high vacuum, high flow. But what we do is we just go down partially on the FACO pedal. So I only achieve lower vacuum and low flow because I'm controlling it with my foot. And that's how I'm able to grab on with just vacuum onto the edge of the epinuclear shell. Then with the chopper, we end up flipping it up into the anterior chamber. So that flip prevents it from falling back in the capsular bag, and it makes it very easy for us to just aspirate it out of the eye. So just about done with cortex removal as well. That looks beautiful. Let's fill up our capsular bag with viscoelastic, and we may as well see the end of the case as well. So a good trick we learned here for removal of the epinucleus. We want to flip it out of the capsular bag. A single piece acrylic lens is going to go on the capsule bag now, just delivering it right there and bringing out the injector and we'll unfold this. This is a routine case. There's a black ink mark inferiorly for this patient on the right side of your screen at the limbus. That just shows me where that 90 degree meridian is. Patient's incisions made at about 180 on the steep axis. A little tiny piece of lens material there will re aspirate that as well. It's stuck in the viscoelastic. Going behind the eye well to remove the viscoelastic in front of the eye well, and we'll clean up the anterior segment here nicely. You can see that's a pretty good overlap of the optic by the capsorexis. That looks good. This patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. Some surgeons do like to have an epinucleus for every case. They like to hide or delineate every single case, and that does provide a little extra cushion or barrier to help protect the posterior capsule. In my hands,